Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at how we can store things in a structure known as an array using the cute little duck as the thing to actually look at. So let's take a look at our duck class before we actually look at the data structure array so we can see what we're going to be putting inside this because we're going to be storing objects in an array rather than just simply primitives like ints, booleans, or doubles. So we have a duck object. Our duck object has some data members, a direction, a description, and whether or not it's sitting. So we can talk about some of the values that are inside it so we can actually look at the state of the duck, aka its internal processes or status. So we can look inside it. We have our constructor that takes zero parameters, our default constructor, as well as a constructor that takes an in parameter representing its direction, so we can assign a direction when we build our object as well. We have some basic methods, flip, turn, and dance. And the dance method, we can actually affect multiple parts of its state, so we can actually describe some things happening to it. We have, of course, a couple getters that go along with that. And then we have our toString method. That amazing method allows us to actually get information about our duck object, rather than simply getting the at sign of some gobbledygook that we really don't want to see. So we have the, our duck object right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at our controller class where we can see where all the work that's going to be happening inside our project is actually going to exist. So inside our controller class, we have a duck array called duck array. We're going to put all of our ducks in a fixed size data structure. And we're going to store a whole bunch of ducks and use a single reference to that structure, the array, so we can talk to and work within it. We also have an array of icons so we can actually see that and actually put some pictures on our pop-up window so we can see what's going to happen inside the state of those as well. And inside that we have in our constructor for our structure controller, I'm initializing that array for image icon right there and assign each value a different picture that goes along with the code that we're working with. So a duck, a useless, a null error, an array, ducks and upside down. So we can talk about the state of what we're looking at inside our project and using pictures to help describe our contents as well. We also have, of course, our duck array initialization right here. Duck array is a new duck array of size 10 or length 10. So we, I'm making a fixed size structure, 10 big, that's going to hold all of our ducks. And so we're going to actually take a look at this and run it really fast. Program running right here, we're using a pop-up window, a J-option pane to show our information. We're going to talk about ducks in a row so we can see how we're going to be using this. So if we go ahead and press OK again, we can see that we have now an array of ducks with an indice right over here. We have the index and the duck that's stored in each of those spots. And we're looking at ducks in a row, aka an array. We're actually going to look at how we can store those things in a single structure so we can talk about all of them at once, aka using an array to do so. And so we can take a, a duck by default or with a direction like we already saw inside our project. And then we can t um, have them also turn um, at an angle, flip over upside down, as well as dance, because, you know, dancing ducks are cute. So when we first create an array, it's automatically filled with just a whole bunch of null. Now, when we have nulls, these are not ducks. No, 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 not duck. It's a null. And so if we actually go in and try and access these components, say, for example, sub 4, sub 5, sub 6, when we actually talk about the array at that spot, it's going to hit null. And if we try and use the dot operator or do anything with it, it's going to crash our app. And that's not very helpful. We actually want to be able to use something with that. So we have to do more than simply just have an array of objects. We have to instantiate each object within that array. So let's go take a look at how we're going to do that inside our code. So we'll switch back over to code for a moment. And so inside our array, we have our array initialization uh, method right here that I'm using as a private method right here to go along with this. And so I'm using a for loop starting off at index 0 up to uh, duck array length, which I've assigned right here in the constructor to be 10. I'm going to go up by plus equals 1. So I'm going to go up 1 at a time all the way through, right, starting at 0 all the way up to 10 so we can go through that structure. And if my index is evenly divisible by 2, I'll just use a new default duck. However, if it's not divisible by 2, aka it's an odd number, I'm going to take the uh, current index, multiply it by 30, and use it to actually create a duck to put at that spot. So I can actually give some use of a different constructor so we can see what happens as we do that. So as we go through that point, we're going to be able to have access so we can go through and put them in a spot. I'm going to go ahead and give a quick little breakpoint right here, and so we can take a look at that. So we'll go ahead and hit debug mode so we can step through this. So our ducks in a row, we have that point, right, boom, boom, boom. And if we don't have that, like I said, we'll hit that null pointer exception, we'll crash our app, it'll break, and that's not happy. We don't want to see our app crash. So we introduce this so we can see what's going to happen as we look inside this. So we've got our deep um, perspective right here. We'll switch to the debug mode. And so as we go ahead and get to the spot right here, so my index variables where we're looking, we can actually see what's inside our stuff right here in this variables section so we can see what's inside our state. We can uh, um, see what's going on with what we're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because we don't need that information right here. We just need to see the code we're working on. Let's clear that up a bit. And so if my index is divisible by 2, aka 0, that's definitely divisible by 2. So we'll step over that and we'll go to the next line. And we're going to assign the duck array at that index a new duck. So if I look over here and I look at this, I look at my current duck array right now, as you can see, it's completely filled with null. All these are null. Not very helpful. We want to actually go in through and actually put things inside that. And so we do that by using the assignment operator 
like we're doing right here on line 53. We're going to assign a, a value into that spot of the array and put a new duck in there. And so if I step over this line repeatedly, boom, 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 you can see that I have a whole bunch of ducks in here with their various IDs. I click on that and we can see a duck out of those different things. And so we have an I am a duck because I'm using the default constructor versus when I'm using an odd number, I'm a duck and it says what I'm basing. So I can see that I'm using the two different constructors to actually assign information into my array. Now I have my direction zero, direction 30. Right here, look at um, two and three, zero again, three. It's gonna be three times 30, aka 90. Now all these ducks happen to be sitting automatically because we're using um, the way the random is happening for that, totally cool. I'll step over this a few more times. Step over, step over, step over, step over. And as we look inside this, I now have my fourth duck also created. It's also sitting. Step over again. And I have a few more ducks, seven are there. And I've got my duck right here. It's doing its two string method. It's facing 210 right there, as we can see. So I have a duck facing with them and it's not sitting, it's upside down. So it's doing a headstand. Oh, so I've got that lovely random number flipping it up upside down because of the way the random happened on that. So we're gonna go ahead and step through this so we can get after that initialization section, we get to our do duck stuff method. So we'll go ahead and step through to here. And we'll use just uh, for the breakpoint right here and hit play pause, so we'll go to the next stop. We'll take that breakpoint out. And so we're now here at the do duck stuff. So we're gonna look at some stuff inside the duck array. Now, as you can see right here, I'm using a for each loop this time instead of a for loop. So I can actually go through and use the, um, the enhanced for loop so I can go through and do that stuff. I, again, I'm inside my, this, I have my duck array which has all of my ducks inside it right there. And I'm gonna use it for the duck array, current duck inside duck array. So I'm using a reference to the current duck right here inside the array. I'm gonna tell that current duck to dance. And then I'm gonna display that duck information. So let's go ahead and we'll step through this a couple times just to see what's happening. So we'll step over that line. We have our pop-up window that shows up right here. Look at some actions inside the duck array, flip back over to our code. And here we are for each duck current duck inside the duck array. And if I step over this again, it's gonna tell the duck to dance. So I'm gonna look at my current duck. And as I get to inside this, I'm gonna look at my dance right now. I've got, I am a duck in zero. If I simply step over that line, we have some changes to the state of the duck. So I'm looking at inside the duck, I'm telling, oh, my, my direction is now 174 and is sitting has now been changed to be false. So my dance method executed on my current duck and actually changed what's inside it. So again, let's go take a look at um, what that does. So if I go over here and I look at my dance method, my dance method right here, as you can see, my this direction is a new random number between zero to 360. And if my um, happens to be divisible by three, then I'm gonna set it to flip itself over. So one third of the time it's gonna flip, great. And so if I uh, uh, play pause again to the next spot, I'm out of here. I'm gonna get back to the spot. I'm doing 174, facing 46. I'm stepping through and doing all these things. If I go back over here into my code and I put a little breakpoint right here at this spot right there, we'll um, go to this, we hit okay. We hit this line again. I'm at this spot right here, display current duck. And my current duck, my description is I'm a duck facing 150. My direction is in 149 and is sitting, so that should be true. So when I hit this spot, I step over this line right here, boom. I'm gonna step onto that and I step over and I'm now facing 149. I've changed that state information so I can go back over here to this and I'm now inside my current duck. And I notice I don't have any idea of where I am in my array. That's the amazing thing about for each loop. I don't know where I am. So when I go through and I use the for each loop to traverse an array or do something with that, I have no idea of referencing where I am inside that array. My current duck that I'm looking at inside my duck array, I don't know which duck I'm talking about. There's no reference to the index that I'm actually using between zero and nine on that array. So that this information is not really great for that. And we see why this is important right here on this next one, I go down to 73, we'll hit play pause. And a headstand facing, facing. Now I'm back over here, I'm at this spot right here where my four duck current duck is um, inside duck ray. Now you see I have this lovely yellow box right here. This is giving me a nice little warning that this is doing nothing. And so the reason this happens is because when I'm using a for each loop inside an array, I have no idea of where I am in the array, so I can't actually change any of the contents of it. In order to change the contents of an array, I have to use a traditional for loop so I can access the index, aka the address, inside the brackets. If I don't have the address, I can't actually talk to the data itself and do any permanent change other than internal state, like I do right here with the dot operator. And let's see what happens every time I step through this. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my this right here. Here's my duck array. As you can see, I have ducks and I'll put this information right here so we can see exactly what's happening. I've got my duck information right there. And we'll scroll this down a bit so we can make sure we can see all of this. 
Do, do, do. You can see all my array variables right there. There we go. And we'll scroll down right here. So I've got my current duck right here inside duck array. So when I step over this line, step over, I have my current duck right here. And so it's a duck. Its ID is 53. Okay, this duck I'm looking at right here, and it's, it's what it's talking about. Okay, I'm a duck, ID 59 right there. Okay, there it is, that, that object 59 right there. Nice reference to it. But as soon as I step over this, watch what happens to this spot right here in my array, index zero. I step over this again, boom, nothing happened. Because when I talk to the array, when I'm using a for each loop and I use the assignment operator, this is just a, uh, just a temporary variable. It doesn't actually do anything to my structure. It's just, hey, here's a quick way you can reference this variable and you can do stuff with it, like call things like dot this, dot that, or dot the other. But to actually assign into it, no, you can't do that. The assignment operator only works if and only if you have the address that goes inside the score brackets. Otherwise, you can't actually make the little duck disappear. And so we'll step over this again a few more times. And we'll just wait till we get to this spot right here. The actual code that does something. Boom, right back to here. Hit play pause, skip right through that and back to 79. Here I am right here in 79. And I'll step over that line, pop up, and nice reminder for us saying you can't use a for each loop to change the contents of a structure. A for each loop is great for traversing and printing and looking at and making small changes to state using the dot operator, but you can't replace it. The rule duck says no. Okay, can't do it. So we got oh, that over here. We'll step over this, repeat that process again. So we step over. However, I can change state. So as you can see right here, I'll turn 100. So I'll go to this point. Hit play pause. Get back to that spot. And so we see that yellow line of uselessness warning us what's going to happen. Because when I have this yellow line right here inside of Clips, it's saying, hey, nothing's happening. It doesn't actually do us any good to do this. So we say, okay, get past that. And we're now on line um, 86 right here for current duck and caught turn. So I'm going to take a look at current duck. It's 53. We're going to look at this right here inside our duck array and watch what happens this time when I use the for each loop with a modification of state method, aka I'm using the dot operator to make a change. So I step over that, boom, I change my value. I hit play, pause, repeat that process. And I step over again, and boom, I'm changing my current duck's value inside my array yet again. This one now changes that value. As you can see, when I use a dot operator, I can go in and change its internal state because the turn method inside duck right here goes through and changes its internal state of that object. So internal state changes using a dot operator, totally okay. The duck, yes. The duck agrees. However, the assignment operator, no, 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 no. The duck won't let us do that. So we'll go ahead and go back to our controller. We're going to go ahead and remove that um, lovely line right there. And we're just going to skip past this until we get out of that. And we're going to go ahead and do the assignment right here inside this one. Where I'm going to go through and assign everything in here back to null. I'm going to wake everything right back out. So we'll go ahead and uh, get back to that point. So hit play, pause, and there, boom, facing 30, I'm a duck, I'm a duck, I'm a duck, I'm a duck. Yay, it works. All my duck information is right there. However, when I use a standard for loop, it does change the structure and talks to the capital I or lowercase i item. So if it's a regular object, like a duck, or if it's a little primitive, like an int, double, or boolean, we can change the actual structure of that object. So if we use the regular for loop, not the enhanced, we can change what's inside the structure. And so we have that right here. So I'm in for ind index is zero, index is less than duck array dot length, index plus equals one. So let's look at my actual structure right here. So here's my duck array. And I look inside this, I have some objects. We're just gonna do a couple step over so you can see what happens. Watch what happens as I use the step over to go from indexes one, two, zero, one, two, and three. So I just step over this, step over, step over, step over, step over. Notice what happens inside my duck array. I'm replacing every single value there with null. As I step over a regular for loop, because I'm using the array base index access, like I am right here in line 96, I'm replacing my cute little duck with nothing. It's gone. I have no more ducks. And as I step through this one at a time, and I go back to this point right here, I'll hit play pause, take off that break point, of course, and play pause, break right through it, and look, I've replaced my entire array of ducks with nothing. There's no more cute ducks. They're all gone. And so we have to actually look at how we're doing this. And so my array is now empty, so I'll step over this one more time, step over, we have the cute message. My array is now empty, there's nothing inside it. I have actually gone through and wiped all my content out of there. So again, when we're looking at this, we use the for each loop to actually go through and change internal state using the dot operator, but if we're gonna replace values, we have to use a regular for loop to make those changes. And so we can go through and I can reinitialize all those values again. I'm just gonna step through this one more time, so step over. 
all ducks are replaced with null. And then I'm going to step over this array initialization method, which is going to go back through and put my ducks back in and replace all those things. I'll give a couple pop-ups and assign every single spot inside my array with all that. So we'll just quickly step through this really fast. So we go ahead and press OK. What was value was all good. Internal state changed by reference. And I'm right here on line 108. Let's step back over on this. I look at my index right here in my duck array, and I now have a whole bunch of new ducks inside this because I've actually gone through and replaced all my ducks back again just by going through and using my array initialization sequence to go through that. Then I can again, using um, a regular for loop, this time going backwards, starting index is length minus one because I'm going to go backwards to start length minus one of the array to greater than or equal to zero, I can go through and assign each value and I can change the internal state. So right now it's sitting as true. I'm going backwards through my array. Helps if I look at this. So I'm right here, I was true, I step over. Index is eight. I'm gonna go here to this, I step over again. Step over is sitting as found false. That's a chain. I repeat that process over and over again. So I'm not gonna flip over it on that. I'm gonna go ahead and skip through this so we can see what's going on. So we'll get back to this point, take off that break point again. Hit play pause so we can go through and process that. So I'm now flipping over all of them, going backwards through that. So as you can see, my ducks, half of them are now upside down because I flip my duck over using the flip command on my duck object. And so once I get to that spot, I've now gone through and processed my array so I can actually go through and do that. So let's take a look at this in one more way. So again, as we look through our code, we have the ability to access what's inside a duck we um, using an array access so I can talk to that duck right there and make it happen so it'll actually show up over the information using the array bakes assets to call and go through and change the state internally. And so internal data is another name for state that I can use by the index reference so I can talk about the duck array at that spot. I can also replace values only by using the array based access with the index, aka the square brackets. It's the only way I can change what's inside my array. And finally, if I'm using a for each loop right here, I can't replace values. If I try and replace values with a for each loop, it's just going to simply just replace it for a temporary value. And it's right back because all this is, this variable right here, current duck, only exists right here inside of squiggles. And so when I assign current duck equal null, I'm simply replacing a variable with null. I'm not actually affecting the internal structure of the array. I can only use the dot operator inside of for each loop to call state-based methods to make changes to it. So that's what we want to do if we want to see how an array can be happened. We can change state with this using an array uh, for each to go through an array of the structure as a whole, or I can go through an array going by index, either going backwards or forwards, like I'm doing right here in these two loops right here. I can either forward through loop or backwards through loop using the index-based access. So I can actually change internal replacement values like where I said multi null or reference to actually talk about the object itself right here by calling dot flip on each object inside that. And that's how I can actually change inside an array what I'm using with a duck. So again, I can use it with an object or a primitive and call internal state on that with an object, of course. Thanks, and have a great day.